All right, yeah, welcome to another episode of the History Hyenas. Um, I'm, I'm uh, cooped up, Chrissy. Uh, Yanni Yaya Hairs is here. We're doing this thing over Zoom again. Um, Dr. Fauci said that the curve is going to be flattening soon. Um, and uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that I've been drinking coffee, uh, about four or five cups of coffee every day, and I've been putting vodka in the coffee. And it's just what it is. I, I'm developing full-blown alcoholism, and uh, it's just what it is. Yeah, um, I'm not scared of the coronavirus anymore because I've been checking in with Candace Owens, and she says this thing's just a, just a, a little boo-boo. It's a little boo-boo cold that's going to go away. It's just a little boo-boo cold, and today's episode is going to be about the Jews because it's Passover, and let's be honest, in Brooklyn, they're the ones spreading it. Let's be honest. Uh, in I'm just kidding. Wei Shun Chien, Wei Shun Chien. But the Hasidic yeah. Jewish people of Borough Park are still holding funerals with hundreds and hundreds of people not listening to social, uh, guide, social distancing guidelines. And it's just S low KS. Um, that's not, I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying that is a factual right now. Um, and, uh, and we're going to be talking um, about good things the Jews have done in this podcast because make no mistake, what they're doing right now is a bad thing in the Hasidic Jewish community. Well, I mean, if they are doing that and... No, it's not if. They are. There's video of it. Okay. If they're doing that, they are doing that, where they're just gathering and continuing to spread coronavirus, then I think the only people really that have to worry about catching it from them are the transsexual hookers that they go to secretly behind their wives' back. Because make no mistake, Ann Eileen uh, was a phlebotomist at a hospital in Brooklyn. Um, she used to take everybody's blood. And she, by the way, Anna, my Anna, Anna Eileen is, is fighting the coronavirus on the front lines as well under the microscope because she's she went back to work and she's looking for the coronavirus in, in microscopes in people's blood and and uh, nasal shit. So she's so she's looking. But she did say that a large amount of Hasidic Jewish men would come in with STDs into the hospital uh, while she was working there. And uh, so yeah, there's no doubt about it that the Hasidic men uh, love to frequent some of the underground how we sh how shall we call them uh, hooker spots. But let's be honest, who doesn't, babe? Right? But let's be honest. <laughs> who does? I mean, since but, I've been know, quarantined up, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, I've been getting hookers myself. What can you do? You're ready to go. I did Jessica Kirsten's podcast earlier, and she told – I gave her a little bit of a long day at points, and also she told me that, uh, you know, you've been putting your dick in the Keurig machine. So that's just what you've been doing. It's what it is because, I mean, one, one way or another, those jerk pods are going to get opened up with my dick. Yeah. I, oh, so you've been poking straight through them like you're the Keurig machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cause, cause after a while, make no mistake, every day is Groundhog Day. So that you, I just have to start to get a little creative with certain mundane tasks, like opening up my Keurig. So I just, I, the, like yesterday, I just put on a Liam Neeson movie and I got chubbed up and then I just opened up my Keurig pods with my hard cock. It's what it is. Yeah. I mean, what are people, people, this social distancing thing, there's a sad aspect to it. The sad aspect is like people who have parents or relatives who are on the way down, um, they can't, they're going to have to say goodbye to them through like FaceTime. It's brutal. Because make no mistake, make no mistake. When I'm feeling horned up, what I've been doing is putting on these glasses, looking in the mirror and making believe it's you and jerking off. So it's just what it is. <laughs> and then I was going to say the, the funny part of it is, you know, no, everyone's backed up right now. I mean, right. there is a nationwide backup because everyone's trapped in their homes with their own family. So they can't jerk off. I mean, people are sneaking off into closets to flip yeah. their bean and pull their monkey right now. I mean, it's what it is. Cause I mean, some of our friends, I mean, Sergio Chacon put up a punching bag in the middle of his zoo of a living room. Cause he's got live snakes and dead rats in his refrigerator. I mean, I was following him on Instagram. He's got a, he's got a punching bag in the middle of his studio apartment living room. I mean, that's how, that's how wild it's getting. Because when you're Puerto Rican from the Lower East Side, like Sergio Chicone, and you get a beautiful apartment like that, you know, Sergio just looks at his house like a Swiss Army knife. You know how there's like multi-purposes for one knife? Yes. He's got that one room, and that one room he can convert into 10 different rooms. It's what it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah it's I, a living room. It's a zoo. It's the kids. It's the baby's room. It's the kitchen. It's what it is. It's just whatever it is. Yeah, because, and make no mistake, the apartment that I'm in right now, the hallway is open for weddings if anybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to get a good deal at a wedding, you can just, you can use this hallway. Yeah, I mean, the hallway's nice, but wait. When you, when you start taking prospective customers on tours, 
for the for the weddings on your side business, which is called uh, you know, Banco Popular Wedding Day. What are yeah. you gonna call it, cuz? What are you gonna call? What are you gonna call your wedding hall? Cause you gotta do a side uh, business now. I don't know. I, I, maybe I'll call it uh, Chrissy Cumpleanos, or maybe I'll, I don't know. I'll I just like call. Chris, I like Chrissy Cumpleanos, and then you're gonna bring people in, and they're gonna say, "That's nice." Hold on, listen. So I, I heard from my cousin that you could do the wedding scene right now because me and coronavirus are happening, but we need to be wedding because all the uncles that came from Puerto Rico and he brought his pet chicken. So yeah. where can, so this is the room and you're going to go, wait till you see the outside. And they're going to go, you got an outside part to this? Yes. And then once they get in the hallway, they're going to say, holy shit, this hallway is perfect for the ceremony. And then you're going to say, Wait one second for me to show you the, the real attraction. And then yeah. when they go outside, cuz, and they see that fake grass, that astroturf. Yeah. And that square footage in that backyard, it's over. It's over. And, it, and, and it's all for the low price of 250 bucks. You can do that. You can have your wedding get for 250 cash. And we supply the staff, cuz make no mistake, we got people here that can work. We got, a, we got the baby as the ring bearer. We got a cook in the situation and we got the squeak and DJ. So it's just going to be great. And then I, because I've been, I've been ordained by Lynn to be a holy, uh, to be a holy minister. Cause Lynn just touched my forehead and she said, I, I'm allowed to do weddings. I can, we can just do the whole thing here. So it's yeah. going to be perfect. If you, cause make no mistake, if you and Mrs. Poppus want to get remarried and have a real Brooklyn wedding, the hall is yours for a uh, hundred and fifty dollars. I'll give you a hundo off cause you're my best friend. I would love to come get my wedding uh, redone at Chrissy Compleanos. And I think that's a great name. Welcome to Chrissy Compleanos. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think the hall, having this ceremony in the hallway is great. And then the reception out back, I mean, it's a two for one banger. It's just what it is. Yeah, because make no mistake, I, I tried to make, I make funny this is. Yeah, yeah. It's just I've too tried. Funny. It's Chrissy Compleanos. Somebody Chris make a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy Compleanos. Because it, it, when things, I know things have been getting, because I've been so cooped up, it's like something, I've been like so like excited to do something that I've just, I've been taking swings. Um, I've been running outside. I mean, I've just been, because you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting about Brooklyn is no matter what, I mean, no matter, there's a pandemic going on, but you make no mistake, the Chinese are still picking up those cans. I mean, who the fuck is even throwing the cans out for them to be picked up? I mean, as soon as you throw one out, they scoop it right up in the bags. So what, how are they still picking up the cans? Who's even giving money for the cans? I think what they're doing, just because otherwise they'd have nothing to do, is I think they're going back out there and they're throwing them everywhere and then they're coming back out there an hour later and picking them up. Oh, you, put the what is, you put the cans in machines, Chris. Oh, okay, on the machines. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. Because that's what he's doing for his part-time gig right now to <laughs> supplement with this. Yeah, <laughs> make no mistake. Yeah, no, the times, times are going to be rough um, for the foreseeable future, but it's what it is. Today, you know, let me just say, you know, times are tough when two people in this podcast have moved back in with their exes. You and Mike Suarez. Mike <laughs> Suarez is living with his ex-wife right now. It's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and speaking Mike, of... Mike Suarez is in the apartment with his ex-wife and, and, the, and the urn of his, his dead dog on the mantelpiece. And also, also speaking of... <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of speaking of tough times, if anybody, uh, if any of our fans out there uh, want to get a good workout, um, if want to get a good exercise workout to maybe some Latin music, maybe some Zumba or other types of spin bike, please DM me for private details. I know a great instructor. I can send it your way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Chrissy Copelianos is open for business, but also the new water jug workout is coming right at you. Yeah, yeah, you, all, you, you eat household items only to work out, water jugs, babies, whatever you have around um, your pit bull, and, and we can, <laughs> and it'll be great. Yeah, and uh, Venetia is back home with her parents where she will be until she's married, because make no mistake, she's got a Greek father, and she just will be living in the home until she is given to another Greek man to live under. Yeah. Yeah, Vanity is always in the same room, and it, she says it's because she's working really hard, but we know it's because her father's locked her in it because she, he had one last, the straw, fucking one last straw was broken over the camel's back when she came home with a non-Greek right before this pandemic happened, and now, unfortunately, he has locked the door and thrown away the key. So she could say whatever she wants, but I know she's in that room and she cannot come out until this thing is over. And make no mistake, as soon as she walks out that door, there will be eight to 10 Greek suitors. And make no mistake, Menetia, if you don't fucking tell your father to visit Christian Cumpleanos for the possible wedding, I'll punch <laughs> you in the face. <laughs> 
What do you, who do you think sounds more like Maurisa? Maurisa or the effeminate Puerto Rican that Venetia used to bang? Yeah. <laughs> Venetia, okay. how you doing? It's me, Carlos. I'm ready to meet you tonight. No, it's Venetia. Venetia, that's right. Vene how you doing, Venetia? Hey, girl. Venetia, has everything been good with you, by the way? I know, we, I know we're fooling around, but have you been good? Everything good? You healthy, wealthy? I'm healthy, wealthy. Everything's great. I... I miss you guys a lot. It's been about a month. Should we all just give, just quick, can we, everyone put their cameras on just to give a quick four-way kiss and then we'll go off just real quick on yeah. three. Just One, on, two, on. three. Mikey, come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. <laughs> Mikey, went, right, Mikey went off. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Right. I'm you know, oh, yes, wow. Mikey. Thank you. I, yeah. I just came. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Mikey's Wait. quarantine hair is, has, is the only person whose hair who hasn't changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um now listen listen today it is pa when is passover again who when is pa shit i mean who cares <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> no it's today it's today it's today yeah go make wednesday. your fucking bread yeah it's what no it's wednesday my wife knows because her company uh they take all the hebrew holidays off make no mistake it's good to work for a jewish company because you get twice the holidays off and also make no mistake what i'm about to say is true one of the people at her company sent out a newsletter to the entire company saying podcast to listen to history hyenas. Wow. Yeah, that's well, we, story. I expect, well, do we need to employ a lawyer immediately? Cause make no mistake, your wife just ruined us because, <laughs> because they're going to hear some of those early episodes and not be amused. Even though what I was saying is not entirely false. Yeah. I mean, this is all, it's all character pieces, it's all jokes, but did you tell the guy who did that? Like, that not everyone's gonna have the same uh, flavor of humor that he does? He just did it on his own? It was Why wild. Did write that? She showed me the email and it was like wild. It was like, it was like, it was the company newsletter saying the best co podcast, History of Hyunas. And she goes, by the way, that's, uh, that's Brittany's husband. So welcome, welcome all our listeners from Nightingale. How you doing? We're going to talk about Orthodox Jews today. Happy, happy Passover. I hope that you're doing well right here in the quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany just went Because the, the, the whole episode of Motion Cash, I'm going to go, we have Motion Cash. Because I'm going to do it. And if he presses end, he presses end. It doesn't fucking matter. It's all about content, baby. I'm Team Schultz. It's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chrissy, today you decided you want to talk about this because we both watched Unorthodox. Oh, by the way. We're well, going no. to, oh, yeah, I was just going to say quick business. We're going to be going live every day, live, live from Patreon, our new quarantine show called WEPA in the morning. It's a morning show where you get to check in with Chrissy Quarantine and Yanni Pandemic Pappas. And we're going to be talking to you for about 20, 30 minutes every morning, nine o'clock Eastern on Patreon. Yes, yeah, so patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. That's the only place you can get that along with a lot of our other content. Uh, that is not available for free, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. So, Giannis, we're going to talk about Unorthodox with Moshe, but we're going to talk about, did you watch the movie Defiance? I haven't watched it yet. Okay, because I thought that's what we were going to talk about today. Well, am I not? Venetia, am I wrong? No, you're right. You're right. I, we're talking about Orthodox Jews, and since you watch it, you're going to teach me all about it, babe. Because yeah, we're make gonna... no mistake, it was sunny out today, and I just did some sunbathing. Yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, I learned. I learned all about. Um, I learned all about Orthodox Jews, and I learned all about different types of uh, Jewish uh, history. And uh, and I, it's 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 nice. It's very nice. The only so, thing is, whenever I see them in the in the in the summer in the train, I mean, these right. kids are committed. As and we learned this from the Ari Shafir episode. They wear those outfits because that's how wealthy people dress in Poland. Because in the middle of August, those kids gotta have fayums. Fayums, yeah, fayum. Eh? Well, listen. But we're not going to talk about that in this episode. Th 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 we're going to talk about Jews, but we're going to talk about Belarusian Jews from World War II. I watched this this movie on Netflix called Defiance. Um, it was um, uh, Daniel Craig uh, was in it and a couple of other hotties, um, people that you've seen before that have went on to become big stars. Um, and it was basically about the B Bileski, B-I-E-L-S-K-I, partisans. And they were the group... So Belarus, Belarus used to be Poland. Did you know that? I did know that because I did research for this. I just didn't see the movie. Yeah, so they got a bunch of Polaskis, basically, Polish Jews, um, 
escaped the Nazis. The Nazis were invading, you know, Poland and Belarus, Belarusia in 1941. And the Belosky partisans, these brothers, they, um, they basically um, hid in the woods. They hid in the woods. It was like a Robin Hood. They hid in the woods and, and, and set up camps, not concentration camps. They set up like uh, camps, Jewish, Jewish camps. camps, pro, yeah, pro, they set up schools. Um, they set up, they had women, children, the elderly, they kept them in the woods and they kept moving. Um, and nobody, I think only like 10 of them got killed in the four years. And no, not a lot of people talk about these people. And I don't know why, cause I was watching this movie. Cause at first it was a Daniel Craig movie and I put it on. I was like, Oh, something, you know, move the monkey to. And then I saw the things in the Holocaust in the beginning. I was like, wait a second. So I put my dick away and I was like, hold on. And then I really paid attention to this movie and I was like, wow. I mean, the way that these men were able to um, evade capture, I was just like, why do not, why does everybody in the world not know about them? I mean, because they had a camp of 1,200 people that the Nazis never got in the woods of the country the Nazis had occupied. You don't think that's wild? I think it's wild. Do you think in part they were able to do it because... Um, they're able to shape shift into goats and have retractable horns, so they hid in the forest. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> well, that's as soon, yeah, because I watched that and then I watched Borat, and then I said, Oh, once I watched Borat, I did more research and I said, Borat proves how they were able to do that. Yeah, they, they just were able to turn into other animals. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're right. It's, it's uh, they, they also fought the Nazis a little bit, right, Kaz? Because they fought the Nazis, they killed a bunch of Nazis. They got so here's another here's here's one thing I just didn't know about the history of it. So in Europe, right? So not only this, not only did Jewish people have to deal with the Nazis coming in and wanting to kill them, but the anti-Semitism in their own country. So Belarusian soldiers who were sympathetic to the Nazis' cause, so their own countrymen were rounding up Jews and killing them. So not only did the Bielski not only did the um, did the Belsky partisan group have to uh, watch from the not you know be beware of the Nazis, they also had to be aware of other Belarusian non-Jews who also wanted to kill them because the Nazis said, "Listen, if you bring us Jews, we'll give you money." And everybody wanted money and needed money then, so they were turning in they were turning in their own countrymen to get money or whatever the Nazis promised them, which is fucking wild. I mean, because make no mistake, that would not happen in the United States, no matter what. If this country's under attack, as long as you have an American flag and you can show me a passport, you will be protected and you are welcome at Christy Cumpleanos because, you know, the only people that I'm not going to give uh, homing, I'm not going to give uh, shelter to is people without U.S. passports. That includes Canada and Mexico. Unfortunately, even though we share a continent, we do not share a, a red, white, and blue heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, I love your new glasses. I love the new look. I love the new philosophy. I love this topic. It's, these are basically, these guys were kind of like the, the real life inglorious bastards. Yes, they were. They were. They were. The, the, the Uva, um, wait, what's the main guy's name was, um, was uh, Tuvia. Tuvia, and he was like the bear Jew because he would just kill people. And that's who Daniel Craig uh, played. And he was just a badass motherfucker. Yeah. So um, the interesting thing, too, to think is before the war, before, before the war, this is the thing, you know, the Russians, they're a little upset because we never give them credit for like helping beat the Nazis. But listen, guy, all right, you guys did, you threw a lot of bodies at the Nazis like you always do because Russians just, they, they step up to, to die. But also you got to remember before the war, Stalin and Hitler made that non-aggression pact where they both decided they were going to look the other way as, uh, as either, as the other one annexed areas. So that area, which is now Poland, was annexed by Russia, annexed by the Soviet Union via that non-aggression pact between um, Russia and Germany. So uh, yeah, Russia, you helped us win the war, but also fuck you, okay? Cause Stalin was an asshole and you guys fucking, you made a non-aggression pact with Hitler and then he fucking, he's the one that flipped it on you. So you're yeah. stupid and you're fucking bad. And you're stupid and you're bad. And honestly, fuck the SS. I mean, I've just had enough of watching these movies and documentaries about how brutes magoots the SS was, it's like, cuzzy. I mean, if anybody is a lot, if anybody uh, who's a fan of our podcast, if their grandparents were in the SS, just give them the, just give them a hug and cough in their face right now. Just do yeah. that for me. Okay. Cause I want them out of here. Just freaking do it. So this is so in, 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 uh, 1939, uh, the good year before 1939, 
Western Belarusia, which is where right. we're talking about. Which is where it was modern. It's pretty much parts of Poland. It might be where my daughter's godfather's from, who make no mistake, has he has concentration camp face if I've ever seen it. Yeah, he just he looks like he looks like he, he just was liberated and he's still in the striped outfit. Yeah, I mean, cause make no mistake, people going into his emergency room, if an older Jewish person goes into his emergency room with coronavirus, they may think they're back in the camps when they see that <laughs> fucking face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the kid's a hero right now, no question. I mean, people are clapping for him when he leaves his question. And I told Chris, because I believe those guys are heroes, and I believe nurses and doctors were heroes even before this. But I told Chris, I said, tell him <laughs> for me that- No, he- don't say his real name! I already did it. Mike, you gotta, uh, yeah. you gotta bleep it. I don't- We've okay. said like a no, million no times problem. before, though. Yeah, just just over over his name, just just say uh, Kilbas. No, say Chesh, which is a Polish word. Yeah, I said okay. I told Chris to tell him that you know what he survived <laughs> the Nazi death camps. He's going to be able to survive the coronavirus. Yeah, it's what it is, and it's just the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because make no mistake, somebody called the coronavirus the Holocaust, and it's horrible. But it, <laughs> I mean, that is a ten. I mean, that is a ten. It's a bit of a ten, but yeah. I just want to say I don't condone that, but. It's just in times of need, sometimes you got to laugh at bad things. And I saw that and it just, I, I, don't, I, I held in the laughter and I farted a little bit. Who did that? Who did that? You know? I just saw, no, I just saw it on the gram. Cause, cause make no mistake, people are stepping up on the gram and hitting fucking homers when it comes, quarantining is really waking a lot of people up. But make no mistake, if you're looking to start a podcast now, yeah. go ahead. But our Patreon, our podcast is going to leave you in the fucking dust because we're at all things comedy and we're finally free. Yeah, so formal announcement. <laughs> We've moved over to Billy Burr and Al Magical's company, All Things Comedy. We're excited to be here. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're over there now. So you're going to be seeing us in LA a lot more once this thing clears up. And uh, we're hoping to grow now. Yeah, we're just hoping to grow. And it's just what it is. And it's going to be great, okay? We're yeah. just, yeah, we're just, a Thank white you. guy's in charge and we can only be led to the promised land. Thank you, Bobby Kelly. I hope you're still friends with us after this whole thing's over. Yeah. It was, it was fun while it lasted, but we had to move on. It's what it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, so the, 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 this partisan group, it's amazing. Dude, literally, in these three years, they were able to, they made a school for children, an infirmary, a synagogue, a courthouse, and a jail, a bakery, a fucking mill. I mean, because these people were able to, and no matter what, you know what his rule was, Tubia's rule was? If you, if, they, if you found them and you were a Jewish person or, or even just a, someone sympathetic, didn't matter how much, how many people you were with, you were all welcome. And they would hunt off the land and do things like that. And then no, I think only 10 or 15 of them throughout these whole four years got killed by the Nazis. The Nazis, because the Nazis weren't really as good as people think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they, they uh, you know, history has it wrong about them. I think now that we've been doing a little digging, we figured out that it, it was no bueno. Yeah, no bueno. I mean, and they also weren't really that good of fucking soldiers. I mean, everyone's like, oh, the Nazi machine. It's like, yeah, the truth of the situation is the first couple of years they had knockout blows because they were building their war craft, but war, you know, war machine where nobody else was. But as soon as, as soon as the rest of the world caught up and it was like, equal strength it was like we beat the shit out of them the commanders weren't that good like nothing was really that good like you you have people in the forest that aren't soldiers and they were able to evade capture because you're just not that good of soldiers so i don't know anybody who thinks like the nazis was a good war machine it's like they were but it was kind of like they were they were varsity players playing against jv and then the jv grew up and was like we beat the shit out of you yeah well yeah they were playing it yeah i mean what you're basically saying is you know, they were basically a white basketball team playing against other white basketball teams until the boys, which was basically most precious blood. That's us, the boys. America showed up. Listen, as soon as Deshaun showed up, it was fucking over for Adolf. Yeah. But here's the thing that's fascinating to kind of create the context that Chrissy's talking about here uh, in, in Belarusia, which used to be Poland before the pact between Stalin and Hitler. Uh, yeah. and what the SS was doing was they were going through all the Jewish ghettos. Now, ghettos just means back then it meant, you know. Yeah, it, did, it's, it wasn't a place with a, with a crown fried chicken. This was like a, a place where yeah. Jewish, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a place where you would, you know, you would go to a barbecue and just see a kid with a very, very long white T-shirt and matching white Air Force once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ghetto, it wasn't that, you know, the fire hydrants weren't open when we're in desperate need of water. It wasn't that. Yeah. 
this was, was a this was a place where Jewish people lived. It wasn't uh yeah. Go ahead, Giannis. It yeah, wasn't what yeah, I was just gonna say. There wasn't a bunch of uh, stores where you walked in where all there was was just uh, Uts chips and there was a Jamaican behind bulletproof grass. There wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't that bulletproof <laughs> grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could get that one out. Yeah, those were, right. those were the weed spots in New York when I was growing up. You just walk in, and there would just be Utz chips on a shelf, and just a Jamaican behind bulletproof grass, and that was it. And I just said bulletproof grass again because I I can't get it out. Cause because you're Yanni onsets, your early onsets Yanni, and it's nice to watch you spiral a little bit. Yeah, I'm spiraling down. But what Christy's saying, so the SS was because going- open your front door right now. I'm outside. <laughs> You've been talking to a hologram, cause I couldn't take it anymore. I'm getting your socks off. I'm going sniffing. Yeah, come on in. I'm gonna sniff your feet. I know you're not here because they would have stopped your daughter at the border and asked for her passport and papers. It's, she's clean, except for one half. <laughs> <laughs> so what All the right, Germans would do it, they would have police units that would g- walk through the ghettos and fucking actually liquidate whoever <laughs> was remaining. They would kill whoever was remaining fucking between, scum between 42 and 43. So, I mean, that's how amazing what these three brothers did. Three brothers, Tuvia, Asio, and Zeus Belsky just created this fucking basically emergency kibbutz yeah. where all these Jews thrived against the Nazis, cuz. Cuz, make no mistake, if your name is Zeus, I'm going to follow your lead, okay? Yeah. The name Zeus is, is you know, Ashel and Tuvia, it's like you have to convince me, but Zeus... My pants are down, my dick's tucked back. I'm one of your freedom fighters. I'm ready to go. I thought it's, you would follow a guy named Tuvia because it reminds you of Luvia, and you've taken a few off of your Tuvia. Yeah, of my uvula. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, yeah no, so. But and, did you um, tell them the part that the, this is like a movie because the Nazis actually killed the fucking, their, their parents? Yes, the, that's, that's, how, that's what it, this all stemmed from. It was all, it's always all personal. Because anything in war is always personal. It's like, it's always just one or two guys that have this personal vendetta that drags millions of people in it. And the same thing with this, even though it was, it was a positive thing, not a positive thing. It was like, they, you know, they, 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 they needed a retribution. But Tuvia, Asel's, and Zeus's parents were killed by these dirty SS Nazi Gestapo fucking, can we call them faggots? Is that okay? Absolutely. If it's SS, okay. Yeah, Nazis um, are faggots. Yeah, okay. So we can say that and let's not bleep that out. I mean, if somebody, if, if some social justice warrior has a problem with that, it's like, I don't know what to tell you, go get the corona. Yeah. So, but they, their parents were killed by actually, and you know what? Their parents weren't killed by Nazis. They were killed by Belarusians that killed them and told the Nazis and like got money for their death. So it was even wow. fucking worse. It was wow. even worse because make no mistake. Fucking Tubia, rats. Rat, dirty fucking scum rats but they got their uh, retribution because they wound up finding the actual Belarusian soldier, uh, policeman that killed, that killed their parents and they killed them, which was nice. Daniel Craig is just plays a, he plays a hell of a fucking role in this movie. Yeah, I mean, Tuvia was the leader and uh, he was an army veteran of Poland and supposedly the kid had a lot of charisma. So the family members just chose him. There was about 30 family members that formed the nucleus of this group. And mm-hmm. they just elected Tuvia because the kid fucking sold tickets. It's what it is. He was charismatic. He was a charismatic leader and he was jacked. You don't see many Jews that are jacked. Can yeah. we, can we, can you guys post to, can you guys go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge boys and post any pictures on the community board of jacked Jews that you find on the internet? There's not that many. I want to see jacked muscular Jewish people. Yeah. I mean, Hank Greenberg was, I, he was kind of jacked. One of the most famous baseball players of all time. He was a Jew, but Daniel Shays, who was one of the only Jewish basketball players to ever play in the NBA before Amari Stoudemire, he yeah. was not jacked. He was not jacked. Neither was Sandy Colfax, who my dad claims to have gotten a hit off uh, in high school, that Sandy Colfax came back and was pitching to his old high school uh, baseball team. And my dad claims to have gotten a hit, uh, a hit off him. But that also could be a lie, like how when he tells me he doesn't know my bank account number. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think that was the biggest hit and run he ever got because I think the biggest hit and run he ever got was banging out <laughs> and having you. I mean... Don't say your real name. Remember, I, we have to change your name. Her name's Karen now and my aunt Colleen. <laughs> I, I'm still facing legal retribution. Yeah, we got to get a cackle over that too. I mean, because if we've said uh, it so many times, we'd have to go back and cackle the whole podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, we're going back and getting our shit ads out and putting the all things comedy ones in, so might as well clean up a little bit back there too. We're about as dead. We're about as dead. Um, they also had another brother, cuz, named uh, Ar- What was Ar- his name? Schnitt fucking Kiddish face? What was his name? Yeah, his name was 
Aaron with an H. A a Aaron. A right. Aaron. A Aaron. <laughs> now, because one, one, one of them died. Alive? Did he die? Is he still alive? If he's still alive, let's get him on the podcast right now. Yeah, can, yeah. Benetia, can you Google that? Is is uh is a Heron? I think uh, the, one of the brothers. Yeah, I think he's still. No, alive. the last brother passed away in '95. Oh. Oh, is, was his name A H A R O N? Um, I believe so. I'm looking at the uh, thing that Chris sent us. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, he lived. He li he lived till recently. Yeah, he, ninety. Uh, hold on, let me just check. His name was A H A R O N B, and his last name was Bilski. I'll check. Okay, check it out. They were uh, the Bilskis were a farming family. Um, then and they had a village next to an area. Uh, uh, they had a farm in a village named Stankovetse. Stankovetse. Yeah, and uh, oh, he's still alive. He's still alive. How fucking wild is that? He's does still he have alive. An does he have an Instagram? Um, no, but he, he has a website. I mean, the I kid mean, was, if the kid was born in 1927, so that means the kid is fucking, the kid is 92. He's only 92 or 93. So he was really young during this. I mean, because if that kid can beat Corona, I mean, he could beat anything. He beat the Nazis and Corona. I mean, he's looking at Corona. It's like, because it's like <laughs> the two people I know aren't getting Corona are this kid because he beat the Nazis and you. Because Corona is going to show up in your system and you, it's already going to be full. And it's just going yeah. to go, I'm going to move on. There's no, you know when you go to an elevator and there's just no room in it and you just decide to take the next one? Yeah. That's, that's what Corona is going to do when it shows up in your system. Yes. I mean, by the, by the way, I mean, I bite my toenails, bite my nose, you know, bang anything that moves. It's like the things that are in my system are just like, I mean, there's bubonic plagues in there. Everything's in there. Yeah. Corona is going to be like, what, what can I even, there's no damage to be done. I don't know how this kid's still moving. Yeah. Now, so how did your baby's mom in law tell you you could be Corona's kid by cutting out a Fanta bottle and putting it over your face and taking well, how many pork rinds can solve it? Yeah, she said, yeah, Tropicana uh, over the face, uh, pork rinds, Daddy Yankee, and then uh, just praying to Jesus, to baby Jesus. That's it. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense, cuz. These somebody guys, said on the page, by the way, somebody said on the Patreon, somebody went to patreon.com slash Bayrish Boys and said that, uh, that they're getting tired of the names being read out. My advice to you would be shut your fucking mouth because yeah. we're reading the na Patreon names out. And if you don't like it, you could fast forward. And I would say, uh, and, and as, soon as, this, uh, as soon as this ban is lifted and we can start to go out and make money again, and then you can leave the Patreon. But until then, please stay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just please stay. But also, people love that. And I don't know what you're talking about. That's going nowhere, guy. Because so. is this episode a snoozer or no? No, it's not a snoozer. Team. Okay, Today's sorry. Snoozer. Okay, sorry. This is a great episode. Vedity, isn't this great? Yeah, I'm laughing so much. Because right, everybody, and also remember, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys every morning at 9 a.m. Uh, waking up. What is it? Wake up with WEPA? It's, it's called WEPA in the morning with Chris Stefano and, and Yachty P. It's called WEPA in the Morning uh, with Chris Stefano and Yanni P. Every morning, 9 a.m., live on patreon.com slash Boys. The first thing we'll do every day is we're going to measure our boners with my daughter's ruler. We're going to measure our morning woods. So we're yes. going to see if the coronavirus is getting in our dicks or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is what these kids did. Also, they were, they were also helped by the Soviets, too. The Soviets did help them yeah. out. Yeah. This, no, listen. The Soviets, the Soviets, they have their moments, Okay when they help out people and, and they're good people. And now that somehow they don't have, they're not getting coronavirus. So it's just very interesting to see. It's very interesting to be a Soviet. I mean, cause no matter, I know they're Russians right now, but to me, they'll always be the Soviets. Yeah. What's interesting is that, yeah, I mean, the Soviets and the Nazis kind of had this little armistice, this little agreement. And then, and then, and then Hitler just went back on it, like a backstabbing little fucking faggot yeah. that he is. We, can we call Hitler a faggot? Yeah, I think that word should just be used in, in that con Yeah, for Nazis. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, yeah. Boris Johnson, by the way, is in ICU with the coronavirus. I mean, if he goes down, the Prime Minister of England, that's a big problem. Yeah, I mean, that's wild that he's in uh, ICU. Um, I have a friend who told me he has four colleagues in the healthcare industry that are that uh, are on ventilators now. I believe it. And now they're saying, and now all the research is from the doctors are saying that ventilators they think makes this thing worse. I mean. I, Nobody knows what it is. It's just a fucking pickle that we got into because of the damn Chinese. 
Wei Shan Chien. Wei Shan Chien. I'm just kidding. Wei Shan Chien. No, I. It, but now, you know for a fact through through your friend. Let's call him. Uh, what can we call him? We we'll call him just. Holocaust why don't we call him? Um. Yeah. Let Let's call him. Um. Let his Mariush is his name. Maruch. Maruch. He, does, he doesn't want his real name on this either. No. Well, I'm just saying he probably. I mean, I'm just saying he doesn't want his real name on. I don't know. I mean, he yeah. hasn't even. He hasn't even seen his goddaughter. I think he's disowned his goddaughter. So, I mean, what can you do? <laughs> but make no mistake, you're still making money, Uncle Mario. You should send us some money. We ran out of toilet paper. So what is, what is he saying? Like, what, 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 would, what would you say to the people who are saying this is no big deal? It's getting overblown. Well, he would say, um, well, from, from what I know between him and uh, the great Dr. Agos, is that it is certainly worse than the flu. It's got something that they don't know why it hits your lungs the way it does. They're just, the preliminary research right now is that ventilators may or may not work. That's not what Dr. Agos is saying, by the way. Dr. Agos is not saying any of that. Um, he's going by what he's taught, but there's things on the internet and some other doctors are saying ventilators make it worse. They're saying that it's actually like an altitude stickness type of thing. It's like if you drop somebody on top of Mount Everest, that it needs to be treated like that, as opposed to this viral pneumonia. But again, cause like everybody else, I have no idea. I'm a fucking physical therapist. And I tried to, I tried to renew my license uh, to try to help out. And they were, and I got through this whole process and they were like, yeah, we don't need you. And I was like, well, make no mistake. I'm getting to that ER and I'm massaging people's feet because that's just what I'm licensed to do. <laughs> but I mean, this is a bad thing though, right? The reality is it is bad. The reality is, is that's a very, it's, it's a very bad thing. Um, the media, not that the media is making anything worse, but the media is only going to report on the worst. The truth, uh, allegedly, according to doctors, the, what the, the truth still is that it's, it's still affecting very, very, very already sick people the worst. And there are, of course, outliers, but that's what they're saying, that it's still just affecting very, very sick people the worst. And of course, medical staff who are taking high viral loads to the face mask every day with this that's what so what they're what they think now is this they think number one it's all about viral load is the biggest thing is how much of the virus you get and two they don't think it's really in the air as long as they previously said they think really the main way to get this is hand is is in the nose or through the mouth right but um it's also unpredictable in a way that some people who, if you do, some people who don't have underlying conditions yes. um, it, it are getting targeted as well. Absolutely. But, but from what my like, friends who are doctors are saying, my, my, you know, my friend who's a doctor is saying, that's true. They, they, he's not, the, he's not, he's like, I don't want to mislead you. That is 100% true. But he's saying that's true in any disease. Right. Right. But That's this thing, they, they haven't figured this thing out yet. They can't get a grip on what it is exactly, right? They can't get a grip on what it is. And the, it, I, I don't think that business is going to open again until July. So, I mean, just what can you do, cuz? If the first time out of the gate is July 4th, make no mistake, me and Patty Fly Balls will go up to Paul Verzi's 4th of July party and Patty Fly Balls will die right there on his lawn and he'll die a fucking American hero because that's what he wants. Patty Fly Balls' main goal in life is to drop dead from alcohol poisoning at your 4th of July barbecue. Yeah, well, if that happens, at least, you know, a true American perished on my property, right? That's the way it's, I look at it. It's what it is. And he's going to get buried. He's going to get buried in your backyard like your dogs. Because <laughs> you know what's wild about this, about this partisan group? Do you know that 70% of them were women and elderly people? I mean, yeah. hats off to, for keeping these, – these brothers were able to keep these fucking old people and children alive. Keep them alive, yeah, because – and at any moment, they could have went down. That's why I thought it was such an interesting thing, and I could not believe at the end of that movie when they said how many fucking people they were able to survive. And then, of course, like any – like anybody who's going to make it big, who's Jewish, who's Jewish-American, who's going to make it big in America, they came to New York City. The, the, these guys wound up in New York City, and they had a prosperous business in New York. Um, I'm not sure what they did, but they did something – they did something Jewish. Yeah, well – they lost an estimated 50 members and they ended uh, at- Which the, is not at, bad. Not bad. At the end, at their peak, they were 1,230. I mean, we lost more on Patreon last month. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and after World War II, uh, Tuvia and Zeus emigrated to Palestine. Oh. They both fought in the Israeli armed forces um, uh, in the 1948 war. And um, 
So, and then after that, they came to the United States. You're right. And Asiel, uh, Asiel, the other brother, actually was drafted into the Soviet army and he died uh, on the front lines, on the front lines of East, of, of, of fighting the Germans. In East yeah. Prussia. See, that's the thing. It's like, and that's another thing with the Russian military. It's like, this guy was able to, you know, when he was staying with the, with the, with his Jewish, you know, brethren, he was able to, you know, he was outnumbered by hundreds by the Germans and survived. And then the minute he goes to the Russian army he died, I think they just, they just fucking, they stick human bodies in the cannons and they just shoot them out. I mean, <laughs> I mean, how did he die immediately as soon as that guy went to the Russian army? Dead. I mean, they don't give a fuck. They have no yeah. rules. I think once you decide you're going to be Russian or if you're Russian, yeah, I mean, they just, yeah, I think they put you in the cannon and fire you. It's just what it is. I think you're right about that. Because were these brothers, the Belsky brothers, were they kind of like the, the Barry brothers of World War II? Yeah, they were dis very similar. Yeah, like John Barry, Brent Barry, like, the, like they were like Rick Barry's kids. They were like Rick, they were like the Ryan brothers from Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah. It's I like mean, that. They all had varying degrees of kind of, 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 uh, of bravery and, and capabilities with, 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 uh, with Zool being the number one guy. Yeah, Zeus. Yeah. Zeus. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Because I thought, I thought you were putting on a yarmulke for a second. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had one. I mean, maybe th if this is, this could be your yarmulke right now. Look, it just this is what it would look like on my head. Yeah, it's just what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got a big fucking head whether we got a coronavirus or not. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz. Yeah. Um, are we going to read the Patreon names or do, are we going to listen to that FF? Cuz you, you look like a secretary in the show Mad Men with those glasses on. Cuz, make no mistake, I look and feel like Annie Potts. Make no mistake, cuz the kid Yanni P has been watching nothing but <laughs> Mad Men. What a great show. Donnie Draper, what a fucking cute lap that kid has. Yeah, all I've been doing is watching shows in Spanish for some reason. I've just been watching everything on Netflix in Espanol. And I'm learning a little bit of Espanol. And it's kind of wild because there's a show that I'm watching right now called Money Heist. That's really good. Um, I watched The Platform, which was unfucking believable And then I watched another movie called The Occupant. And they're all filmed and all the actors are from Spain. Because make no mistake, when you watch a movie from Spain, you always think that you're getting spit on through the TV because those kids have a lisp. And I don't know why they all sound like fucking FFs. The whole country sounds like FFs. They, they do. They sound we're from España. Welcome to Ibiza. Ibiza. Now, so should um, we do the Patreon, Mike, or no? Uh, yeah, do you saw the one that sent you last week? Yeah, Mike, I just want to fucking, I just want to lay you down and melt Kraft Singles, macro, uh, Mac, Kraft Singles slices of uh, American cheese all over your body and eat you like a fucking burrito. Well, I'm already halfway there. I want to eat you like a burrito with a jarrito. <laughs> Mike, where, where did you send it again? Uh, to the Christy, I mean, let me resend it. Yeah, just resend it. Uh, I got a quick question for the fans, just because they want to know: uh, Is there any update on the Iranian clip? Can we can we go ask or no? Well, we were getting close to getting a yes, and then she looked through my phone, and we are far away again. Damn it! So Two we were getting close. Six steps back. Yeah, god damn it! Stop sending me DMs, ladies. Um, um, can somebody respond to the Moshe Kasher email? V. She I he's, he has. Did. Oh, you already did. Cute, woke, dope. Yeah. Guys, can you read. go to my apartment and water my plants? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I want to come in. Yeah, I want to water your plants. And because, yeah, hold on. Oh, here we go. Oh, the sponsors. Yeah, fuck the sponsors. Yeah. We're not doing it. All things comedy said no more sponsors. <laughs> Do these. Oh, oh, wait, here we go. I got the list. Okay, uh, patrons. Okay, you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, remember, you, um, you, you read some of these already, so. Bubbas, do you remember where we stopped, Mikey? I can't, honestly. I was looking through Fuck! it. Fuck! We got pretty far down that list. All right, guys, you know, as always. Start, start from the bottom, and we'll do it that way. Yeah, guys, okay, you know, cool. as always, go to lakesidemaple.com, promo code WILD to get your trail mix. It's the official trail mix of the History Hyenas. Um, I use it every morning. Three flavors, nothing like Lakeside Maple to go in your mouth or up your ass. It's just what it is. Yeah, they, they'll clean you out like Dr. Fauci. 15% off use code WILDLakesideMaple.com. What, and what's the other sponsor? James Altucher, thank you for your service. That's it. You know his name, Stand Up New York. Go listen to his podcast. The great James Altucher, still, still our sponsor, our producer. Thank you for your money. Let's see how long that lasts, Mr. Stock Market. Yeah, he said he's willing to sell Stand Up New York for $10 right now because it's a fucking money pit. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know what? What can I? What can I say? It's what happens when hey, Bert's your host. Um, okay, 
All right, here we go. Here's the Patreon members. These are the people that went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Uh, you know, some of them have made funny names. Um, we, we love when you guys make a funny, creative name. Um, we, we, we pick every week, we pick a PPW pseudo penis of the week. Um, names that make us laugh. So here we go. There's quite a few, but they're all funny and it just goes quick. So don't be a fucking FF and write ever on our comment board again that you don't like this part because make no mistake, I'll fucking come over there and I'll beat the shit out of you when we get some more money, maybe in the summertime. If you want to talk shit, talk shit in July or August because then we can tell you to go fuck yourself. But right now we need the money. Make no mistake, we need the money. And if you're looking for a good workout, private message me. I know a good Zoom instructor. Okay. First up. Chrissy D, get off my lap, you Jack Sparrow of butt pirates. Nice. <laughs> then we got Trishy Tall Tales, no fumade. Bew, JJ, Cajun Crawfish Monkey with Perpetual Fumes, Pellegrino. Nice. I mean, good one, good one, good one. Drexler, first official Drexler of the list. Zachary Holloway, Diener, Sammy the Hyena Toot, Armando Marquez, Enrique Enfado, Jacob Pisani, Circa. Kiel Hellenbrand. Wow, that guy sounds like an SS. Um, <laughs> Alex Baldgia. Ryan Whitlock. Then we got Denny paid my 25. Better get my turkey day invite or Chrissy's getting these hands. Nice. That's a goodie. We're going gonna to put him on the list just because of lack of a better one so far. Yeah, because, and make no mistake, you will get invited uh, to my turkey day um, if, this, if this coronavirus isn't cured by then because I'll still need your money. Um, <laughs> So, Christian Adams. Then we got Walker, Wuhan Warrior, Cotton. Put him on the list. He's put on the, the list. Wu, put the Wuhan Warrior on the list. All right. Then we got Cody, not gay, but you can call me Krista if I can sit on Chrissy's lap. Drexler. Vincenzo Amato, Brandon Doyle, Anton112. What's up, Anton? Yeah. Um, Chrissy, Mini, Pacquiao, Hanzo, Campo. Okay. Drexler. Quarantine really making me think differently about the Chinese Snoop D Snoop D O double G. <laughs> I think if we would have got a better read, he would have had more punch. Sorry him, about that. Now put him on the list. You're on the list. Uh, then we got Patty Talk Therapy. Uh, <laughs> Funny but Drex. Okay, then we got Chrissy Farts. Um, hold on, Chrissy Farts. Me like come, but till will. I I mean it's just. Chrissy farts. Oh, sorry. Chrissy farts smell like cum, but I will still stick my Irish piece in his bum. I mean, he almost suffered from a bad read. Now he's the front runner. Put You're the him front in the runner. lead. It's just all one word. It's yeah. so hard. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, he's the front runner. He said your farts smell like cum, but he'll still put his tongue in your bum. He still still put my Irish piece in his bum. I like it. <laughs> okay. Then we got uh, Mitchie B, the Caucasian Canadian kid, but make no mistake, Trump 2020. Okay. Okay. Just more of a political statement there. <laughs> yeah. Corey Bergstrom, Stephen Perfect. Sayers. Then we got Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite so far. Put, the put the Squeak on the list. Simple. Okay. That's a quick jab to the face. Then we got Paul. Then we got Oscar, my mom's a piece, my dad's a squeak, Suarez. <laughs> put, him, put him on the list. <laughs> yes, yeah, what it is. Put him then on the got, list. Uh, Kristen Luke, Emil Rudell, uh, I'm sorry, Emily Rudell, Chris Barnard, James, Joel, JD, Rich, Staten Island, Potato Monkey, No Fat Chicks, Trump 2020, Stripe. Okay. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> Jacob Goodwin, Cesar Guzman, Rootin' Tootin' Toot Machine. Uh, <laughs> like that. William Dunn, Matt Hindricker, Andres Ramirez, Chris Stinson. Then we got Chris Ken Cuzzy with me because I want him to be my huzzy. Okay. Then we got Dina. Then we got Call Me Mr. Swastikok because my dick destroys. Okay. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, Rodrigo, Don't Throw Me Over the Wall, Gomar. Um, then we got Bo Jingle Jangles 1, Nate Finnerty, Dino Turbic, Aaron. Uh, Sylvan, Crack, Chrissy D, Open, Zavala. Uh, then we got Sam with the fifth of Jameson and a night on Chrissy's couch, McCaskin. <laughs> Funny, Drexler. Then we got Chrissy, the less Jack, J.J. Watt, and Yanni, the close-eyed Greek freak. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the list. Get it, yeah. Then we got Vincente Cardozo, <sighs> Angel Martinez, Mark M., It's Kaylor Swift. ZTM. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's what? It's Kaylor Swift. Okay. Like. Okay. 
Then we got Guillermo Andres, the Middle Village Squeak Carballo. Wow, we got a lot of White Walkers on this list. Yeah. Then we got Johanna Bringzaka, the Squeak Back Bouch. It's not going to happen. Then we got Gage. I want Chrissy D. Play with me and my love sack Stevens. Um, then we got David Bond, Imran bin Abdul Rahman. Wow. It's a good eight. Welcome. Wow. Muzzy. Nice. That's Muzzy Cuzzy right there. Thank you, Muzzy. Brad Mercer, Such. Then we got old, John, old Johnny Crack Me Open and Clean Me Out because his laps monkey's been B. Okay. Jonathan Seal. Then we got Ahmed, surprisingly fumeless Sahabi. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, that's in the lead. Uh, yeah. The lead. Put him in the lead. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Martin Nunez, Jenny Olivares. Uh, I hope Chrissy gets back with the situation. Sixty-nine. Um, quarantine from COVID nineteen. Chrissy D's spleen. Okay. One. Chrissy over. D's peen. Yeah. I'm sorry, Chrissy D's peen. It's quarantine from COVID-19 with Chrissy D's peen. It's nice. a good one, but he's Drexler now because of the previous. It's not his fault. Yeah. Uh, Balmania, Christopher Scott, Teabag My Mom 69, uh, <laughs> Andrew Webb, John Michaels, Justin H., Brennan, Nathan Keen, half muzz bag, half Jew bag, full dirt bag. <laughs> nice. It's another nice. good one. Uh, you know, just on, on another day he would have won, but, I mean, the surprisingly fumeless I know is the winner. Okay. Um, then we got, uh, Chris, it's 420. We need to talk. Um, <laughs> what a goodie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we got Theo. Good fucking luck. Pronouncing my last name. Scold. Um, then we got Ryan. Asalam. Ali Khman. Ham Salami. Bacon. Trump 2024. Nielsen. Okay. <laughs> also funny, but Drexler. Jonathan Orlowski, Omer Orbison, Connor H., Dan Elston, Michael Soar, Ivor Christensen, Daniel Marahabian, Richard Huntwork, Matthew Skukorski, and then we got, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew, Sk yeah, Sikarski. Then we got Ebo, the Nigerian kid, Max cracked open and Steuben cleaned out. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put him on the list for the inventor. He's on the list. That. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, then we got Jacob going trans because a man should lead the patriarchy. Blake Kelly, uh, Yanni Quarantini, Tiny Peeny, which we, we never read. <clears throat> no, but we never officially read them. Oh, wait, that one, that one we didn't read? We, we said just out loud said, we never read it, though. We never uh, read it, technically. I thought he won picture. another one, because that's a funny one. Oh. Then we got Shane, Edgar Ramirez. Then we got All Right Andy gives an All Right Handy with an All Night Candy. No Sandys. <laughs> <laughs> He he would he, I think he may be in a tie with the other guy. Okay. Um. Let's see. Then we got Carlos Tafola, Jack, Katie Ramos, Tony Edelbrook, not short, fun size Carol. Then we got Brandon has streak. So Chrissy sniffed my seat. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put Brandon on there. Jesus fucking. Put him Christ. on. All right, Laura Smith, Dirk, Casper Nielsen, Megan Brown, Emily. Then we got Joe White. It's fine on Prime. Everybody does comedy. Who cares? Um, <laughs> Good one. Then we got Mikey, AJ. you want to put him on? Mikey wants to put him on. Put him on. Like that one. AJ Rodriguez. Then we got Shawnee Wuhani. Bangs out with a toe in the mouth like Yanni punks to Wani. I mean, put this motherfucker on the list. We got a lot of goodies. This is a big one. Moro, your whore tomorrow, Amato. Uh, Connor McGowan, Andres Mercado, Paul Pamphlet, Madeline Plot, Pepe Gonzalez, Sean Drody, Corey Hunter, Brad Walden, Chris A. Then we got Mike, my piece rests to the left, but I vote to the right, Fitzgerald. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Drexler. Bradley Speck, Michael Martinez, Troy, A.C. Humphreys, uh, Kelly Quarantine with a dash of COVID-19, uh, Canadian Cutie with a lunch lady booty. Okay, I think uh, we got to the where we were yesterday, last time. Okay, got it. So that's it. Those are the names. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Mike. So who made the playoffs? All right. So we got Denny paid my 25. Better get my turkey invite or Chrissy's getting these hands. We got Walker, Wuhan Warrior Cotton. Quarantine, really making me think differently about the Chinese Snoop, D-O-double-G. 
Chrissy's fart smell like cum, but I will still stick my Irish piece in his bumps. Uh, and then squeak. Um, <laughs> Oscar, my mom's a piece. My dad's a squeak. Suarez. It's a good one. It's Chrissy, good one. the less Jack J.J. Watt and Yanni, the close-eyed Greek freak. Those are good ones. Close-eyed Greek freak. Ahmed, surprisingly, Fionn Sahabi. <laughs> I mean, for me, I mean... That, that's my favorite. That uh, guy hit me hard. Ebo, the Nigerian kid, Max, cracked open and Steuben cleaned out. Good one. Alt-right Andy gives an alt-right <laughs> Andy with all-night man candy, no Sandys. That's the runner-up for me, that guy. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Brandon has no... Brandon has streaks, so Chrissy sniffed my seat. That's another... That one hit me hard. Joe White, it's fine on Prime. Everybody does comedy, who cares? Shawnee Wani bangs out with the toe in the mouth like Yanni punks a 20. <laughs> That's punks another good one. But I think Ahmed's my favorite. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Mikey. Uh, surprisingly fumeless. Surprisingly fumeless could be just like, that could be a shirt. That's really funny. <laughs> surprisingly yeah. fumeless. I like it. Yeah, All right. but it's it. That's three, so we don't even need your vote, Venetia. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Ahmed, surprisingly fumeless. That's the hobby. You are our PPW of the week. Thank you guys so much. Continue to go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Remember, every morning, 9 a.m., WEPA in the morning, only on patreon.com. Also go to historyhyenas.com. We got merch. We got all types of fun shit up there. So check us out, baby. <laughs> <laughs>